Hello everyone. Welcome to this new video where I will show you a way to practice free sample questions for the Azure AZ900 exam. Wizlabs offer free test of 15 questions so you can access and learn from these sample questions without any cost. I will walk you through these questions in this video. If you are convinced with these practice questions, you can go ahead and purchase the entire set of practice test which contains nearly 310 questions broken down into 12 different tests. That's really a lot. In case you want to try or purchase them, you can find the link to the practice test in the description below. So to access them, first log in with your Google account. And these are the paid test. So let's try the sample ones which are available for free. These are some exam instructions and there is a limit of 20 minutes to complete them. So let's start the exam. So the first question is, a company is planning on purchasing Azure AD Basic for their Azure account. Does the Azure AD Basic tier come with an SLA of 99.9%? So the SLA terms for Azure Active Directory mention that for Azure Active Directory Basic and Premium Services, there is an SLA of at least 99.9% .9 availability, whereas there is no SLA provided for the free tier of Azure Active Directory. So the option will be yes. Let's move on to the next. A company needs to store 2 terabyte worth of data that is infrequently used. The data needs to be accessed via Power BI. Which of the following could be used as a cost-effective data layer for this requirement? Well, the first two options, Azure SQL Database and Azure PostgreSQL are fully managed relational database services. They are typically used for mission-critical workloads. So it doesn't make sense to store data that is infrequently accessed in these relational databases. Whereas Cosmos DB is a NoSQL database for applications like web, mobile, gaming or IoT, so you would assume it is more suited for data that is frequently accessed. So all the three will be wrong options to select. Whereas organizations use Data Lake as a dump yard and collect and store all of its data, whether frequent or infrequent. The Data Lake is a single store of all the enterprise data, including raw data and the transformed data for various tasks. So the right answer should be Data Lake. Moving on to the next, a company is planning on creating several virtual machines in Azure. Which of the following is the right category to which the Azure virtual machine belongs to? So IaaS, PaaS and SaaS are the three different forms of cloud computing. At the lower end, we have infrastructure as a service. So compute like virtual machine and networking like Azure virtual network, which are the hardware layers, they form part of IaaS. So the answer will be IaaS as we are creating several virtual machines. Whereas PaaS is a platform as a service where you get hardware and software tools over the internet and you use these tools to develop applications. For example, Azure App Service. And SaaS is a software as a service where the end software is available to users over the internet usually for a monthly subscription fee. So probably Gmail or Netflix. Fourth question, a company needs to create around 50 customized virtual machines. Out of these, 20 are Windows based virtual machines and 30 are Ubuntu based machines. Which of the following would help reduce the administrative effort required to deploy the machines? Now, if you're going to create 50 different virtual machines, you cannot use Azure portal to create one by one. So that increases a lot of effort. So the question is basically testing your knowledge of different options or different services available in Azure to lessen your administrative overhead. Now, the Azure Load Balancer is used to divert traffic to a set of backend virtual machines, so it is incorrect. Azure Web Apps is used to host web applications, so again it is incorrect. Azure Traffic Manager is incorrect as well as it is used for DNS-based traffic routing. So Azure Scale Set Service is the answer 
as it lets you create and manage a group of identical VMs and all these VMs would have a similar and a consistent configuration. Deploying many VMs at once will help reduce the administrative effort. Moving on to the next, a company wants to make use of Azure for deployment of various solutions. They want to ensure that whenever users authenticate to Azure, they have to use multi-factor authentication. Which of the following can help them achieve this? Well, with Azure AD Identity Protection, you can create policies there that can enforce MFA for users. So the right answer is Azure AD Identity Protection. Azure Security Center is just a unified infrastructure security management system in Azure. So that's not really the right answer. And Azure DDoS protection is purely a solution to protect your services or resources against distributed denial of service attacks. And Azure Privileged Identity Management is a service that is mostly used to give just-in-time access to resources. So last three are incorrect and the first one will be the right answer. A company is planning on hosting two different virtual machines in Azure. When the virtual machine demo VM is stopped, you will still incur cost for the storage attached to the virtual machine. Is it true or not? So first understand that the storage and the compute for a virtual machine are built separately. So for VM, it builds for vCPUs, RAM and the temporary storage. If you attach any managed disk, which is typically stored in a storage account, it will have a separate cost. So when the VM is stopped, you stop incurring cost associated with only the VM. But you will still continue to incur the cost for managed disk which is detached from the VM once the VM is stopped. So the answer will be yes. A company is planning on setting up a solution in Azure. The solution would have the following key requirement. An integration solution for the deployment of code. Which of the following would be best suited for this requirement? Now for deployment of code, the only answer will be Azure DevOps. As Azure DevOps consists of a large set of tools and pipelines which can be used to build, test and deploy your code. Azure Advisor helps you follow best practices to optimize your Azure deployments. And Azure Application Insights is used for monitoring live applications. Whereas Azure Cognitive Services are used for adding AI to your application. So the first three are not right. An IT engineer needs to create a virtual machine in Azure. Currently, the IT engineer has a Windows desktop and has installed the Azure command line interface. So from which of the following could the IT engineer use the Azure command line interface? Choose two answers from the options given below. So you can use the Azure CLI from either the PowerShell or the command prompt. So both the options will be correct. Now you cannot memorize answers like this. Probably if you had worked with some of the Azure resources using the command line tools, this question is a cakewalk. So I encourage you to get an Azure subscription and go and create resources and play with the resources. And once you do that, you will be in a much better situation to tackle these kind of questions in the exam. A company wants to try out some services which are being offered by Azure in public preview. Should the company deploy resources which are part of public preview in their production environment? Now, there is no SLA guarantee for any service in public preview. So, typically, you should not be looking at deploying any services which are in preview into your production environment. So, the answer would be no. A company is planning on using Azure storage accounts. They have the following requirement. Storage of 2 terabytes of data and storage of a million files. Would using Azure storage fulfill these requirements? For this question, you need to be aware of the limits of Azure storage account. If you look at the documentation, Azure storage account has a limit of 2 petabyte for US and Europe and 500 terabytes for all other regions. So Azure storage will fulfill these requirements and yes is the right answer. A company wants to make use of Azure for deployment of various solutions. 
They want to ensure that suspicious attacks and threats to resources in their Azure account are prevented. Which of the following helps prevent such attacks by using inbuilt sensors in Azure? So Azure AD Identity Protection and Azure Privileged Identity Management are incorrect answers since they are used for protecting identities in Azure Active Directory. And Azure DDoS is to protect against distributed denial of service attacks from external environment. Whereas Azure Advanced Threat Protection uses sensors to monitor user activity across every device in the organization. So the last option will be more suitable. A company has just deployed a virtual machine named Demo VM to Azure. The overview of the virtual machine is shown below. The company needs to know if the underlying infrastructure in Azure hosting the virtual machine has any issues. Where could they view such issues? So let's analyze the options now. Azure Advisor is an incorrect answer as it is used to provide recommendations in Azure and you cannot view any issues arising out of any Azure resources. And Azure Active Directory is used for identity management. Whereas Azure Monitor will give you the health of the entire Azure infrastructure but will not specifically let you know on the infrastructure health for just the virtual machine. So the right option will be virtual machine blade. You can see any service health issues for the infrastructure of the virtual machine in the resource health section in the VM blade itself. So you will only be able to answer questions like these if you have played with the resources in the Azure subscription. A company is planning on deploying a web server and database server as shown in the architecture diagram below. You have to ensure that traffic restrictions are in place so that the database server can only communicate with the web server. Now this is a typical architecture which most of the projects would use that database is in the backend subnet and all the communications to the database have to be cut off. So which of the following would you recommend for implementing these restrictions? Well, you generally use network security groups or NSGs to allow or deny traffic within subnets in a virtual network. This can perfectly isolate backend subnet from the internet. All the others are incorrect. Azure Service Bus is a messaging system and you cannot use it to restrict traffic. Local network gateway is used in a site-to-site -site VPN connection and a virtual network gateway is used to connect networks together via the internet. A company wants to make use of an Azure service in private preview. Are Azure services in private preview available to all customers? Well, know that the services in private preview are available only upon request. So if a service is in beta, you can try it. For that, you will have to complete a form to avail the preview of the service. And coming to the last question, a company has multiple subscriptions. They want to create resources in different subscriptions. Is it possible to create resources in multiple subscriptions? Of course, you can create resources in multiple subscriptions and all the resources can be viewed under a single Azure account. So try taking a free Azure account and creating different subscriptions and creating different resources under different subscriptions and check for yourself. So once you are done, submit the test and like in the actual exam, you get your score and the examination result. And it also shows you the report for domain wise performance. So for example, if you have to analyze my questions for core Azure services, Click that and you will see all the questions related to the domain and their correct answers and explanations for each question and also links to the Microsoft documentation in case you like to learn the concept in depth. So if you are preparing for AZ 900 exam, 300 questions are a lot and it covers the length and breadth of all the objectives in the exam. So check the description for the link in case you would like to purchase the full length practice test.